Community Director for NKCDC, New Kensington Community <laughs> Development Corporation. Yes. And um, PHS has a long relationship with NKDC, as is the Water Department. And Shanta will talk a little bit about kind of their neighborhood's sustainability goals and how we kind of came together to make some improvements to this site. Great. I'll try to be really brief for questions much later, but um, essentially we're, what we're standing on right here is part of what we refer to as the Big Green Block, which is a model of green infrastructure for, um, for the community. And this, um, this block is intended, or was intended, uh, a few years ago to be the biggest, greenest block in the city of Philadelphia. So we're constantly trying to figure out ways in which we can continue to green it. Um, but this site is part of a much larger initiative referred to as Sustainable 19125. And some of you may have some of these. Um, these are part of our materials that go out to people in the community. But Sustainable 19125 is made up of three initiatives. One is the Big Green Block that we're standing on. The second is uh, an initiative called Walk, Bike, Ride, which advocates for public transportation, um, better bike lanes, things like that. And, uh, and then finally we have a program called Green Blocks, which empowers local residents to make changes in their homes and on their blocks. Right now we have about 1,000 people participating in that program and 60 individual blocks, so a lot more um, uh, a lot more blocks are accurate, a lot more people are actually involved through that program. Um, this guide talks about the very individual steps that we're asking people to take and people become leaders and then, um, and then promote greening activities or actions within their blocks. So, um, but the way this all fits in is because it's part of a, a larger community strategy to make this the greenest neighborhood in the city of Philadelphia. And um, we have come a long way, but we also have a really long way to go. Um, this initiative, kind of the history of this initiative started about 15 years ago with the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society to try to figure out ways to green some of the vacant land in the community. At that time, we had 1,100 vacant parcels in the community, most of which were piled high, waist high with trash. These are some of the lots right here that were at one point um, uh, waist high with trash. Uh, and these were some of the first ones that um, PHS and New Kensington worked on to stabilize. So what we did is cleared it all of trash, planted seed, um, surrounded the perimeter with trees. And it's interesting because these are some of the first ones that are now um, going through redevelopment and have um, the private market who's investing in the area. So that's some of the construction that's going on here. Anyway, um, Backing up to about three years ago, we worked together to try to figure out what the next steps in this initiative would be and work with the community and a number of other partners, including the Water Department, um, the City's Office of Sustainability, Parks and Rec, the School District, um, Mural, Arts. Mural Arts, right, um, and um, got together and took a look at this particular site to see what actions could be taken. At the time, there was a new, brand new $45 million um, school being put in. It's the first, I believe, first public lead platinum high school in the country. So it's been a huge source of pride. We felt like this was something that we could try to tap into to make this much larger area an asset rather than kind of a hidden, um, underused recreation center. So. Do you want to take it over from here? Or are there more things I should... No. So I, I think, you know, initially we had a, a pocket of money to help NKCDC construct some green sustainable projects, whether it's deep paving or whatever the nature of those projects were. So as Shanta mentioned, we kind of focused in, rather than doing small interventions in numerous places throughout the neighborhood, we kind of focused on this, which is called the Big Green Block, which basically goes from Frankfurt to Front, which is of that building, to Palmer, which is the street, and Norris, which is to the north. And PHS had done some small, on Norris Street we did these um, storm management tree trenches, but they're very primitive in nature. Basically it was just like cutting holes in the, in the curb to allow water into these tree pits. And so we, we had already invested some energy and time in this neighborhood, and this felt like the right place to do it. I also sent around some images of the fours, and this particular site we were on was pretty darn horrible. It was all paved. It was um, Jersey barriers to prevent um, along this edge of the site, 
right um, where the mass garage is on the left, there was a chain link fence that was stopping, preventing people from going down through Palmer. So it was not a necessarily a place where, you, where people were encouraged to come based on its physical attributes. So when we went, came, we did a master plan for the big green block and we looked at opportunities to connect to the L stop, which is just right behind the school here. There's a historic wall that runs along the middle of the site here that we've um, created an opening along the school and others to um, allow that passage. And it was really looking holistically at um, you know, reconnecting or getting rid of barriers that were stopping movement throughout the site and getting rid of this blight. There's a lot of illegal dumping happening on site. So we did a master plan that identified all these areas. And our first project that we did last year, or not last year, maybe two years ago, was right here. It was basically the concept was to let's reduce the amount of pavement in this parking lot, let's make the stripe logical, which it wasn't, and um, through doing that we were disturbing a ferry that we had not capture an inch of water to meet the PW regulations, so then we, we developed these stormwater management basins. Um, so basically these basins used to be both asphalt. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the detail of those. And then we also engineered these so that the water department would come in at a later date, which has since been done, and we captured the runoff from Blair Street, directed those into the basins, in addition to the runoff from the parking lot into the basins, and I believe, and we'll talk a little bit more, that we have not connected to this trench that's across the street on Montgomery here. And that Frankfurt, also, yeah. And we're bringing in runoff from Frankfurt too, so there's a lot of runoff coming down Frankfurt, Montgomery and Blair, and it's all coming into either these basins or systems that's under, that are under that sidewalk over there. Did you size these basins based on that? Much of the depth? Definitely Blair and the parking lot. Yes. So, yes. Is that, sorry. Oh. So, the, the basic project stents were from the, from the fence that kind of terminates the kids' play area all the way down. We put in a new curb, new sidewalk. We removed the chain link fence. We extended a walkway down through the Palmer. We basically cleaned and greened what, um, the green area beyond this um, fence. This fence is our typical vacant land fence, and it's considered to be a temporary solution because we are hoping to work in a phase two for this site, which is again addressing the basins, trying to make them more horticulturally savvy. Um, we also want to take a look at this piece of land and use that as another way to kind of create an urban park setting that is sustainable in nature with solar lighting, etc. But we made that connection, we got rid of the chain fence, we secured the area here to stop the legal dumping, we removed significant portions of asphalt pavement, we restriped the parking lot, we extended the parking lot a little bit this direction to create a second entrance, so basically buses, now when they're dropping kids off for games, can circulate around and have to do a three-point turn in the parking lot, which they historically did. Um, and the system itself, in terms of the basins, is pretty simple. Basically, sheet flow is captured from the parking lot into the basins. There are trench drains um, that cut through the sidewalk at the low end of Blair as it comes down to the driveway that direct water into the basins. Um, each basin acts independently during low rain events, but during the, the bigger rain events, there is a pipe that cuts across underneath the driveway that allows for the to act as well. During that, allows us to have a local flow structure and set it back to the sewer rather than having to create the basin. Um, as you see, the basins are a little denuded of plant material, and I guess I should learn some lessons from Liberlands when we did the Panicum, but we tried it again, and it did not work. Um, it was, um, we put in plugs, it had some accidental mowings, etc. So now we're currently revisiting with NKC and PWD what this next version of these basins will be, because they're a little... They're a little harsh looking and we want to try and soften them up again. Um, so that's going to be phase two, which is now in progress. And how fast do they infiltrate? How long do you get standing water in there? Not long at all. Not long at all. You barely, barely find any standing water here. Yeah. Actually, one of the, from a landscape artist's perspective, the, the concept of water ponding and being a visual thing, and it's so disappointing in so many of our structures because they work so well. Yeah. I mean, they just don't pond. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, there's, I kind of wanted to pond so kids can plant a little bit there. <laughs> it goes away before the mosquitoes get here. But um, that's why things like the run of the Liberlands are fun because you get that direct right. interaction with the water itself, which is quite hard to 